Today's a wonderful, wonderful special guest. It is somebody that I met, has it been 20 years ago now, at least? At least, in Kauai. And uh, it was one of those wonderful retreats where I, I take a bunch of people who don't know each other off to some strange land and they become good friends for the rest of their life. And that's what happened. After you swam with the sharks. After you swam with the sharks. That was great. Oh, yeah. I saw them. You know, every once in a while I do a retreat where people won't forget the thing that happened that shouldn't. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, that's one of those that happened that shouldn't. And uh, beautiful Coco Palms was alive when we were there in uh, Kauai. And uh, that was an amazing hotel. And what happened is I told my, my followers, as it were, uh, I want each one of you sometime to swim naked in the ocean. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of being one with the womb of the mother. And the ocean is just across the street. Now, I don't care when, but I think you're going to feel an experience you've never felt before. And I'll go out there and stand in the water. You can be under your neck and hand me your bathing suit, but however you want to do this, but it's one of the most spiritual things I've ever done. So they were hesitant, and some of them, oh no, I don't know, do it. it's, and it's midnight. And finally, about the fifth day, I was lucky they kept their clothes on streaking across the street. They were so excited about this experience. And so when I'm checking out on the seventh day, I said to the concierge, you know, our group really loved going over and swimming at midnight. He said, your group's swimming at midnight? I said, yeah. So that's when they take all the food left over from the Pearl Cafe and they throw it into the ocean for the sharks. Well, I guess none of my group was as appetizing as the garbage <laughs> in the ocean because nobody got hurt. And so our dear Reverend Annie remembers, oh, that's the time we swam with the sharks. And I don't think we were aware of them and I don't think they cared about us. But thank you anyway, Annie. For your <laughs> this was the same time that we met uh, Annie Angeline and and Annie is a term of endearment and also professionalism. This is a, this, you're honoring. It's kind of like a general, or a, but it's a, a really important title. And today we are so lucky to have Annie Ann Lemuel here. She has a traveling Lomi Lomi. She travels around and does Lomi Lomi and gives people a wonderful look at the Hawaiian aloha way of life. Please join me as we will. Welcome, Annie and Anne. Now, there are chords back here, so when we talk about being in a chord, we don't want you to be. We just, <laughs> wrap we just, up in it. Yeah, okay. we just want to step over them, okay? I don't need a microphone. Can everybody hear me? Yes, but they can't record. Oh, they can't get recorded. Okay. But you can take it and walk around with the, with the microphone. Yeah, I'm a mover. Yeah, you, don't, you can take it out of there. Okay. We'll record. Better. It's okay. Because there's people that want to be here that just couldn't make it today. And they, you know, I, I promised them that, you know, you would, they would be able to get you. They're going to get me anyway. Get you, get you. <laughs> okay. Well, I would like to start, like I start every Lomi Lomi session, with a prayer and a chant. And Dottie, if you can just move just so I can get on your, to put my hands on your shoulders, is that okay? Honey, you can put your hands anywhere you want. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. This is that kind of church. <laughs> so, every single piece of body work that I do, I put my hands on their shoulders, and we do a prayer, and we do a chant. A puli kako, a prayer for this center, and this center of the center whose hands I have upon. We give thanks in advance for the release of all that no longer serves, safely and progressively, with grace and with ease. Mahalo kea pua, mahalo kea pua, mahalo kea pua. Malama, malama, malama. So be it, and it is done. Amen. 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 Do you know what? 
We have mind fluffs sometimes. <laughs> this is interesting. Okay. E o mai kaiki mai luna mai e o na me a huna noia o na mele e e o mai e o mai e o mai. That's calling in the ancestors to come and help with whatever is happening today. And thank you for letting me borrow your shoulders. You're very welcome. Okay. So, in deference to the air conditioner, I'm going to take my hat off. Mm -hmm. Because it's hot. It keeps the heat in my body. Mm -hmm. This hat is from Auntie Angeline. This is a little hakule that she gave to I brought Auntie to be present. Thank you. For Thank you. This, this. May I put it on the altar? Sure. Okay, can you even put it on the basket? basket? Yeah. Great. This happens to be a gift from Kahuna Ed. Hi, oh, Amy. yay. How many were in Hawaii that I met in Hawaii? One, two, three. Okay. Great. Good to see you guys again. So this is an Opi'i shell, and he gave me that. So it goes on the altar. And because it's hot, <laughs> we will do this. And that'll, no. <laughs> do what? That's all. That's all I'm going to That's as far as I'm going. Okay. So interestingly, I told my travel companion, Colleen, she's traveling with me. She wanted to come for this, whatever I'm doing today, and for the workshop. So I went and got her in Sacramento, and my car started overheating, coming in. And I'm going, okay, universe, I don't need examples of how it is that you use Hawaiian spirituality to move through the day. But here we go. So I started doing ho'oponopono with the car. I immediately got off. I poured water over the, the radiator. And ho'oponopono to me is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, thank you. And I kept doing this to the radiator. Well, it went down enough for me to pour. I poured water, I couldn't find my antifreeze, and I remembered I'd put it in underneath. And I got it out. And it went down and I was able to get here. I was so thankful Yay. that I didn't have to call somebody saying, come get me so I can make it. So we made it here. So you, you, I use what I learned in 27 years in Hawaii every day, all day, all the time. And to me, spirituality is living in the spirit of whatever it is that you're choosing to express in your life, whether it be living yoga or living lomi lomi or living being a minister, or whatever your passion is. One of the things that Auntie Angeline always asked people is, what is your passion? What is it that you absolutely love? Well, for me, I'd say my biggest passion is Hawaiian Lomi Lomi, and all that it entails. And uh, actually, I started crying <laughs> with your when you started talking about Hawaii. So I might get a little teary. Auntie Angela passed away a year ago in th at the end of January, and she was my best friend. We built a spa together in Kauai. So not only did they swim naked with the sharks, <laughs> they came to our spa, which has two octangular steam rooms with two tables in it. One for males and one for females, and there's never as many males as there are females. And what you do is you go in and you get a salt scrub. The salt draws and it, it cleanses you of things that are on your body. And then it has clay in it, which draws the impurities out, and you let that melt on your body. And then you rinse off. There's a hose in there, nice and cool. And so everybody got naked on that deck. Yeah. We had some major burns oh. because some flesh isn't used to being out in the open. Especially with coconut oil on it. And yes, and, and coconut oil is an intensifier, yes. It says, here, bake me, bake me, bake me. So I lived with that family for many, many, many years. And to me, that was one of the most exquisite parts of my life, was to be able to learn
from that and five other families. I've been hanai by many Hawaiian families, studied with them. So in Hawaiian Lomi Lomi, there are as many ways of doing Lomi as there are families that have passed down traditions. It's all, uh, and it, it has never been really given out freely to others until Auntie Mary, Auntie Margaret Machado from the Big Island started teaching and the Hawaiian says, well, you're giving away our secrets. She says, the Hawaiians are not perpetuating the Hawaiian Lomi Lomi and I do not want to see it die. So I spent many years, Auntie Angeline and I would go over to Auntie Margaret's every year. We didn't have insurance. We went over and did a 10 day Hawaiian seawater cleanse where you drink seawater in the morning. And then they give you a bucket with a toilet seat and everything that goes through you goes into it, and then you they look at it, Auntie Margaret would read your bucket, and she'd say, oh, you've been doing cocaine. And the person blushes and says, yes, I'm stopping. It's a way of cleaning out the insides. So Auntie and I would use that as our insurance policy every year. We would go over, and Auntie Margaret said, Anne, you need to start doing the cleanses. So I started doing the cleanses at our center, which had a huge deck, what, 40 by 60, something like that. And we had two big 16 foot octangular rooms with two massage tables in them and the steam. And it helps release all the things from your body, you let your body cry and lets it go away. And we lived, literally, we ended up, it got so busy, we put and made some bedrooms for us downstairs, so we were right there. It didn't matter what time you needed us, we were there. And um, it was a fabulous lifestyle. And then, I, Auntie said, you need to start traveling and doing the work out. It needs to be out on the mainland, as she calls it, here. Mm -hmm. And now, as Dottie mentioned, I have a 40-foot motorhome, Class A, it has slide out so I can put my table in it, and I have several altars, and I have, I do my work in my motorhome, so I park. Right now, I'm in Livermore, so people come to me wherever I am. I was just in Car uh, Monterey, uh, and now I'm in, in Livermore. I'm going back to Monterey, then I'll be going to Morgan Hill at the Thousand Trails. It's an interesting way to live in a motorhome. I love it, and I travel around and do that. And um, I just uh, oh I also wanted to thank I don't I don't know whether it was you or Corky who put in self care is giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you was that you or Corky 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 that is so right on um, I happened to sit sat song the only time I sat sit sit sat with that. And this lady said, you know, everything you do, you do for yourself first, and everything else flows from that. Auntie Margaret, who was the queen of Lomi Lomi, she has also passed. And by the way, Auntie Margaret and Angeline Losi, who, who were some of my best friends, they uh, were deemed treasures, living treasures of Hawaii. They were honored that by the state. and. Um, because they had so much knowledge as kupuna and kahuna. Kupuna is an elder with the wisdom, the fountain of wisdom, and the kahuna is one who is a master at some sort of something. And Auntie Margaret was the master of the cleansing and the lomi lomi, and she taught and she taught and she taught. One of the things that she taught me, she was not even five foot, and she kept giving and giving and giving because the Christian thing is to give. It's better to give than to receive. She pulled me aside and said, Anne, I've lived so wrong for so many years. It is better to fill yourself first than you give from a full basket. So self-care is giving the world the best of you instead of what's left. If you don't fill you first, it is draining. And so what she ended up doing was she didn't slow down. She kept going, going, going. The universe provided her with a slowdown that enforced her to slow down. That's not a fun way to learn a lesson. So then she couldn't do what she wanted to do. And so she encouraged both Auntie and I not to give so much of ourselves that there's nothing left of us, which is the reason why I wanted to do the self-care. And self-care without having to buy tools or 
potions or lotions or you need nothing. nothing. You need nothing. Everybody has either coconut oil or lotion to lubricate the skin so that you can do what you need to do. So I brought nothing but coconut oil to do with the self-care so that you don't have to go out and buy essential oils or Kanza tools or tutti forks. Or it's affordable to everybody. The biggest thing is learning about who you are and what your body is doing. So on the spirituality of Lomi Lomi, I live it daily. One of the uh, most exciting things that happened to me, I was visiting Auntie Angeline after I had come to the mainland and started traveling around, doing my work. And two young men came to the center while I was visiting and said, Auntie Angeline, we need help. I had a shoulder challenge and this guy had a hip groin problem. And, she, and he said, what do we do? We came to you to, it's been chronic. And she says, well, what you do is you talk to Anne. I go, oh dear, here we go. <laughs> She's done this to me several times. So I said, okay, gentlemen, I will give you a 15 minute laser lomi. I says, what's the challenge with your shoulder? Tell me your story. He did, I gave him 15 minutes, and then the other guy gave me his story, I gave them 15 minutes, and I asked, I always ask, on a scale of zero to 10, where's the pain level? Zero, nothing, 10 excruciating. They were up in the sixes and sevens, we got it down to two or three, and I says, are you happy with the results for 15 minutes? Yes. So about a week later, I'm still at Auntie Angeline's, and I get a call, and it's from the Hawaiian Nomi Lomi Association in Oahu. And these are a group of Hawaiians who do Hawaiian Nomi Lomi. And they said, would you come teach? And I went, oh, and may I ask why you're asking me to come teach? You're Hawaiian. <laughs> I should come learn from you. They said, oh, we know the chants, and we know the culture, and we know everything. But the boys that went looking for help said, you live it. There's the difference. We don't know how to live it. We just do it. And it's not just something that you do. It's who you are and what you become and who you be. So I who signed up when I went over and I taught 23, almost all of them full blood Hawaiians, Lomi Lomi. I didn't have to teach them chants or the history or anything. And it was such an honor, I was blown away. But I, it made me realize that people don't live what it is that they're so passionate about or what it is that they're wanting to express to the world. And this is how I make a difference with people is by example. So, what exactly is Lomi Lomi? Lomi Lomi is, well, it's healing hands. The hands are very important. And it's also, Lomi Lomi salmon is meaning you break up the salmon and you put the onions and the tomatoes and the green onions all in it. And that's what you like. Yeah. Oh, no, delicious, I call it. <laughs> well, that's, you break up what's going on in the body in the chaos and you create harmony in its wake. So in other words, you're, you're allowing it to release and you do it in a gentle way. Um, there are some who think you have to force it out. I don't believe that. I believe you open the channel so that it says, oh, I can finally let go and leave. And that to me is what Lomi Lomi is. I give people an opportunity to, oh, to rest and then release and it helps them to leave. And thank you for asking that. Yes, Lomi Lomi is about loving hands. And it's about uh, being 110, 20, 30 percent present when you're doing this. You're not thinking about anything else like uh, the price of diesel at four dollars a gallon and you have an 80 gallon tank. You don't think about it. You don't think about, oh, the puppy is upset or whatever. You're 100 percent focused on Who's there on your altar? And I call my table the altar. So, I prefer to live in such a way that I am honoring all that I received from the Hawaiian people in 27 years of living there and going back and forth for many, many, many years. And um, doing that by being kind, by living aloha, by taking care of me so that I have more to give, and that's important. About teaching people 
um, how to take care of themselves and, and, and that it's okay to let go and all of the different things that I've learned. I, I don't use just Lomi Lomi. I use many, 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 many things. And being able to make a difference in their lives. <clears throat> I have a, through a, a woman who just happened to come to me in Carmel, she says, my son would love you. I says, well, let, give me his email. I'll let him know. And he lives in Garden Grove. Well, he lives in Huntington Beach, but he has a company in Garden Grove. So I go down. Every time I go to Arizona for my R&R &R to go fishing, to be on the water, to let the water take care of everything, I go and stop in Garden Grove. And when I first got there, I go, wow, he has a demolition company with 110 semis and bulldozers and bobcats and 160 men who are working very hard. And they always have injuries from constant repetitive movement. And I have been able to make a huge difference. And this gentleman actually pays for their sessions to come so that he doesn't have to do workman's comp and he doesn't have to have them go out for carpal tunnel surgery, which does nothing because carpal tunnel is in the armpit, not at the, at the wrist, right. which most people don't know. So, uh, so I go four times a year and I get to stay there and, and, and to make a huge difference for him, his company, his people, and I appreciate that. I would like to see if anyone has any questions on what they would, any questions? Any questions out there? Yes, ma'am. You just got through saying uh, carpal tunnel is in the armpit? It's in the armpit and along the ribs. It has nothing to do with your wrist. Good. You go in for surgery and you're, yeah, they You're compounding the problem. It has nothing to do with your wrist. And I can show you how to take care of that in the self-care class. And you do it yourself. Okay. You already signed up. So. I am signed up. Yes, oh, no, she already, oh, you already signed up. <laughs> Good. Good. There's many things that... that um, you, we, we're speaking of rainbows. Okay. So there are ways of making sure that you have your chakras and everything all those colors coming up, and if you get your head gets full, how to release that so that you don't get blinding headaches, etc. So there's many different things that that the Hawaiians taught, and that I am choosing to pass on to as many people as that want to experience it. Yes, another question. Okay, listen. Um, you spoke about um, that it's important to fill yourself up so that you are full when you are when you are giving. Um, I'm just curious, in the workshop that you're offering this afternoon, um, do you, will you be teaching like what specific things each person can do for themselves? I can, if that's what you want. All you have to do is ask me. And I'll, I, I, I don't do workshops and I have a list and we go down the list and we do it. It's who shows up, what they're interested in, and what they want an answer for. It's, it's not a rote. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? So I'm, I'm a little confused about something. I heard you say earlier that, was it Auntie Margaret? Auntie Margaret Machado, yes. She learned, she started teaching Lomi Lomi, and people said that she was taking it, and she said she didn't want to see Lomi Lomi this die. Yes. And then, but then I heard you say that you learned Lomi Lomi from the Hawaiian People, so. Many different families. Okay. Okay. So, well, okay. All right. So, Auntie Margaret was teaching. She didn't care if you were green from outer space, gay, or whatever. Uh -huh. I was hanai which means adopted, by many different families, so therefore they taught me. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And what, what Auntie Margaret said, she had no judgment, no discrimination. You came, you signed up. Sometimes she gave the class away for free, and it was like a two-week live on the premises at Keala Kakua Bay on her on her lanai and right by the ocean and whatever. She actually she wanted to perpetuate the spirit of Hawaiian Lomi Lomi. And not enough Hawaiians, they were too busy going into technology or into yeah. whatever. They they lost the interest to follow the traditions. So she said, I don't care who you are, where you come from. You've, she had people from all over the world come yeah. to either do the cleanse or to learn the Hawaiian Lomi Lomi or just to visit. And uh, 
Yes, that's so. Does that answer your question? Yeah. She 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 wanted it out in the world. She didn't want it hidden. So for so many years, it was against the law to practice Hawaii Yeah, that's 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 the part that that she says baloney. <laughs> she she was innovative and uh, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. But the Hawaiians were some of the Hawaiians. The traditionalists were upset with her. Not the people who were receiving it, of course, but the ones that thought they should keep it all secret. And no, we need to get it out into the world. Out that, of the world. The reason I asked that question was because I wanted to make sure I, I knew before I asked the question I have, which is, are Hawaiian people like okay with non-Hawaiians learning Lomi no. Lomi in your experience? Well, when the Hawaiian community, who is almost 100% Hawaiian, asks me to come teach, I would say, yeah, they're yeah. okay with it. <laughs> Do you understand? Well, he's yeah. kind of an anthropologist person. Oh, 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 just, yes. <laughs> some, some are going to be tradi traditionalists no matter what, and they're not going to be happy that the secrets are getting out. And some are extremely appreciative that the, it is being perpetuated. Yeah. So just saying it in a nice way, I'm uh, aligned. It's like my cousins, and they're not nice how they express it. They're not nice to how they? No. Oh. I mean, they go on how we hunt. Yeah, I understand. Okay. I have never had a problem. I went to what is it? The one that's all on on a big on the on Oahu, the community Waimanalo. Yes. Okay, I went out there. My brother was in a horseshoe tournament. Mm -hmm. Well, it was ninety nine percent Hawaiian. Yeah. I acted like it, there was nothing different, and therefore I was accepted. Oh, yeah. And I have never had prejudiced against my color. In fact, I've had people say you're more Hawaiian than Hawaiian. You are. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, and thank you. I no, appreciate I was that. thinking that same thing. I was going, wow, it's like, you, you, you live it. Yeah. Yes. I do it. And thank you for that. This gentleman here, I'm always, you know, saying, oh, I do it like this because it's well brought up. Oh, and every every session of Hawaiian Lomi Lomi is different. Every single session is different because they have different things happening in their body or in their mm -hmm. spirit or in their emotions or in their psyche or what they're going through or what they've been walking through around the house that other people are well, going through. And you are receptive to Lomi Lomi, and some people aren't. Oh, yes, and I am so thankful when I get somebody who's willing to yeah. release and let go yeah. on the table. It's hard work when they're just here because somebody thought they should come. Yeah. In fact, I don't allow that. You, if you, if you want your friend to come, they have to make the appointment. I don't want somebody showing up just because somebody's paying. Yeah. And then it's hard on me, and they don't really get it. It's like casting pearls before swine. <laughs> I want to ask a question now. Is this like, at all like Reiki? Of course. Is me like Reiki? Oh, of in course. that you feel that the energy is coming through you. Oh yes, yeah. that chant I do was given to me by Alba Kamalani. She says, Anne, you need a chant to bring in the ancestors. Well, I get so much help sometimes, I get patted on the back and I almost fall on top of the <laughs> I said, well, we have lots of visitors here helping, and uh, you did a good release right there. <laughs> and, yeah, and I've been doing this for 36 years. So, I've trained myself to be very observant to neurological twitches in the body that tells me things, to, to facial expressions, and I do most of the Lomi with my eyes closed because it's my hands that are the radar. And I, it, it's, it's, that's just, and you learn how to read each individual and not come in with any preconceived, you know, they say, I want to come in for this. Yes, well, that may be what you think, but we're going to see where we're going to go. Because your body talks. And that's part of the self-care. Are you listening to your body? Pain is a messenger. If you ignore it, it's going to get harder and harder and harder until it knocks you down. So you either take care of it when it's a pinprick, a toothpick, or you get the two by four, and you get the enforced vacation because you're laid up for six weeks because you didn't pay attention to slow down. So I learned to slow down. <laughs> Yeah, I had two, two items that happened to me. I broke an ankle and the ninky, uh, pins and plates and all that. 
Mm, it allowed Angeline and I to go to Vegas and play while we were here. <laughs> <laughs> there were very many visitors to Kauai at that time. There weren't very many leaves on the tree. So we went and did something else. And then I fell down and broke my wrist and they had to put in a, a hinge. And uh, yeah, that worked. And it works. So uh, it was a slowdown. It was, a, it was an enforced slowdown. Because I tend to have a lot of energy. And I move a lot. Any other questions? Yes, again. Um, so do you actually um, tune in to the person's, uh, what the, where the person's uh, real issue is in the body rather than what they think? It doesn't even have to be in the body. It doesn't have to be an issue in the body. I don't work just with the physical. Your Lomi starts when you make your appointment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Once you've committed to coming, I start getting information. Okay? And again, after 36 years and tuning in, this is, it's just easier for me to get as much information. And that changes. By the time you get there, maybe it's all different. But then we just put hands on, we do our prayer, and then we just pay attention to what the body's talking about. And as I touch the body, I'll go, wow, what happened here? Well, how did you know? Well, my hands won't move. It says stay right here and give it energy. <laughs> okay, so there's many different ways of, of determining what you're going to do next. The body talks. It's like I hit a tar pit, okay, I'm not going anywhere. I have to stay right there and work this area, okay? Now, how do you get training? Uh, if you're living in San Jose, how do you get Lomi Lomi training? Invite me here for a two-day workshop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I do two-day workshops. Let me finish here. Okay. I do two-day workshops, it's 200 a day, and it is a full eight hours and come prepared to, 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 to learn a lot. I'm not doing anything to teach you how to work on others today in the workshop because it's about self-care. If you want to learn how to help others with this, then we do a regular Lomi Lomi workshop. And we do beginning for two days. I can come back and do advanced work, but we don't start with the advanced work. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm not, I'm, uh, because some of the advanced work is pretty advanced. So if you want, it's two hundred dollars a day. I come for two days. You, you, you're going to learn a lot. Every move I teach, I do on every body in there, so you know what it feels like from me. Then you pair up after I've done everybody, or as I do people, I pair you up. And then you go practice on each other. And if it doesn't feel the same by the time I've done the knuckle roll on everybody, I'll go around. Does it feel like what I did, what they're doing? No. Then I show them. And then they go, oh. And then, so everybody learns how to release the cranial and the occipital ridge with the knuckle roll. So is this at all like massage? Of course. Yes. I mean, devil's advocate. Oh. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, some is massage, some is energy work. Some of it is just a discovering where to find things so that you know, you know, X marks the spot. There's either bruises, blemishes, uh, you, you know, yeah. it's like the, the Hawaiians use stones, white and black, to find out what's going on in the body. Uh, I can only carry so much in a motorhome. I just, uh, my dad was a very good dowser. He could take a willow stick and find the riparian, whatever, wherever the water is, if it's flowing, if it's a lake underneath, so that we could have water in our little place in Oak Creek Canyon, just above Sedona. And then he would use dynamite, and we'd, he'd do it well, and then we have water. Well, I douse with my hands. And it, it, so you just take what you inherited from your ancestors, and you use it. I didn't realize that's what I was doing until about 10 years ago. My hands are dowsing, and I douse to find out what's going on in the body. So the, now you're talking 36 years of experience. So I didn't learn this at the beginning. It's a learning process. Yet I have lived Lomi for 36 years. So therefore, I have advanced quite well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And you did have one question, and we're almost over. Uh, do you have any appointments available when you're in Martin Hill? Yes, I, in Morning Hill, yes, and if you will sign up and put your email and your phone number mm -hmm. and your name and what you're interested in, whether it be this, this class, a, a, a Lomi Lomi class, or an appointment, mm -hmm. I can then, when I go to Morgan Hill, I'll send out, I, I put all my contacts in geographically. 
if I'm in Morgan Hill, I'll send out all the San Jose people that I'm in Morgan Hill. I don't usually set up appointments. What you do is you call me and we, 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 we get a day because my, my Morgan Hill time is usually my, oh, I get to sit and rest. <laughs> I'm in Livermore and I'm going to go to Monterey. But I can do in, Mor in Morgan Hill with appointment, you know, you call in instead of I have an on online calendar. Right. And where's the sign-up sheet? Um, back back there. there, you're going to sign up for the, one for the class. If you're signing up for the self-care class, great. Also, put I want a session. Okay. In Morgan Hill. Okay. And then I have your information. Yes, ma'am. What do your sessions run? Uh, it's two hundred for two hours. I use a cinch, I use prayer. I use chant. I use thirty-six years of and seventy thousand people experience. I use uh, essential oils. I've had miracles happen with essential oils. I didn't, like I said, didn't bring all my tools because I want you to learn self-care without having to buy anything. I use Kanza tools, which is a Tibetan three different metals tool that I don't understand how it works. I just know it does and therefore I use it. I don't have to understand it all sometimes. I use tuning forks because tuning forks go beyond what my hands and fingers can do. It runs deeper with the vibration. So I, I do a lot of things. Okay, and I think we're, we're, we're running late. You are going to clock. So th thank you. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate it. And, and somebody says, Well, what are you going to say? I says, I don't know until I get there. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. For